everyone, welcome to this week's talk, Audit in Healthcare, helpful for any healthcare professional students on quality improvement modules. You may be an early career nurse asked to be part of an audit, to conduct an audit, or you might be observed in an audit and wonder what it's about. Also, if you have an interview, you may be asked what is an audit cycle and how does it inform quality improvement in practice? So this video is for everybody, lots of helpful tips, and I hope you find it useful. Do give me a thumbs up on YouTube if you do, and do check out my other videos. So firstly, what is a clinical audit? Clinical audit is a process to measure the quality of care to establish whether change is required. So this is how it links to quality improvement and change in practice. Clinical audit measures the effectiveness of healthcare against agreed evidence-based standards of good practice. So if you're asked in an interview, what is an audit? It's about looking at what we're currently doing making a judgment and evaluating whether current practice meets the standard set, the standard expected. Then the audit data that's analysed will inform future quality improvement actions. So you either keep what's in place, you sustain good practices, or you need to implement change to improve standards. Whatever the audit outcome, you always go back and you re-audit as standards can improve or fall. So there are different types of audits, methods and audit tools. Two key types are retrospective audit and prospective audit. Retrospective audit is where the data is already available before the audits begun. So, for example, data is stored on an electronic database. Electronic health records are searchable, for example, for specific criteria such as patient data, interventional treatment or care pathway data. So, for example, you could audit from referral to cancer treatment. And then we have prospective audit where data is collected at the time to give the team feedback on its current performance. So a simple example would be hand hygiene audit, where staff are observed in clinical areas using hand washing techniques over a set time and their hand washing technique will be compared with the national protocol for hand washing. And the results will then be expressed as a percentage of time that hands are cleaned by staff using good hand hygiene. In the UK, we also have local and national clinical audits. So an example of a local audit might be a documentation audit on a ward versus a national audit, such as the National Diabetes Audit. And that audit is considered to be the largest annual clinical audit in the world. The National Clinical Audit and Patient Outcome Programme is commissioned and managed on behalf of NHS England and the Healthcare Quality Improvement Partnership, HQIP. And they currently, currently we have more than 30 national audits related to the most commonly occurring conditions. So there's a national audit on dementia, a national audit for care of end of life, for example. So it's important to check on these national websites for current audits in your field, especially if you're applying for jobs. There's a national audit on epilepsy, for example, and if you're applying for an epilepsy specialist nurse or a medical or allied healthcare professional role, you might be asked questions relating to audits and clinical standards. So do check out the NHS websites and the Healthcare Quality Improvement Partnership website. Healthcare Quality Improvement Partnership is a partnership and independent organisation led by the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges and the Royal College of Nursing and National Voices. So they have a wealth of information on their websites. So as a registered nurse for over 34 years, I've been in the position of being observed during an audit. I have been a ward sister where results have come back to me or I've conducted audits myself as an educator, taught people about audit. And there's some key principles linked to audit. The first is that it's a continuous and cyclical audit process. So once you've completed one audit, it's informed actions, you should return as part of the audit cycle to monitor future improvements or there may be falls in standards. The second is that audit results should be transparent. Don't change results because they were unexpected or not what you expected. So you need to keep to what the data says and be true to the data. 
Audit should not be confrontational or judgmental. It's not an opportunity to name, shame, blame managers or a service or the team or a person. It's an opportunity to learn from data, to improve practice, to educate um, and to work on quality improvement actions as a team. So you should use a collaborative and team approach to support the team, to support the nurse lead who might be quite shocked or upset with the result of an audit, for example. And that's how you will improve and change in the future. So before I go through the pra practical application of audit and the audit cycle, I have four videos on my YouTube channel that you might find helpful. There's a video on how audit is different uh, to research and to quality improvement and service evaluation. There's a video on quality improvement and quality assurance with an overview of key terms, especially helpful for interviews. And then two videos practically explaining using change management or quality improvement models. So I hope you find those helpful. So you will see different cyclical models for audits. Burgess et al 2011 presented a very simple four stage model that has evolved into a five or six stage model, but they're very similar. Um, with Burgess et al, the first stage is preparing and planning. Um, the first stage involves deciding what your area of focus will be for your audit. What are your aims? What are your objectives? What criteria are you going to use to measure and evaluate the standards? The second stage is measuring performance, where you actually conduct an audit and you analyse the data. The third stage is to implement change, depending on the analysis of data and the audit results. And then you have stage four, which is sustain, improve and re-audit. So you would sustain good practice, for example, if the results were good and you would aim to implement improvement if there was areas to improve and later re-audit. So I mentioned the five stage audit cycle, you might see a six stage even, but they're very similar to Burgess et al's um, model. And I have a reference for Burgess et al at the final slide on this talk. You will see these models on NHS websites, on employer websites as well. So an example of a five stage model, stage one would be prepare for audit, stage two, select criteria, stage three, measure performance, stage four, making improvements, and stage five, sustaining improvements. So if we look at some practical application and some key tips, first thing is preparing. So you need to look at your topic, your aims and objectives. So to help you choose your topic, it really depends on the objectives, what you're trying to achieve with this audit. And also, is it a priority for the organisation? Because you're going to need to get authorisation to, do, to conduct an audit. Is there good evidence to inform criteria and the standards, for example, is there a systematic review or national clinical guidelines in the area? It's very helpful to contact the local audit office and many employers have their own audit office if they're a large healthcare trust, for example. But there's also national leads that you could contact potentially linked to audit. Is the audit planned already or has one been conducted recently? Do they have an audit tool, an already established audit tool or audit protocol you can use? So networking with um, local and national audit leads is very helpful. State clearly what you want to measure. So for example, they, there may be some poor record keeping that you're noticing as a manager in an area and you want to do an audit to improve the standard of record keeping with nurses. Or the aim might be to achieve 100% compliance in surgical hand antisepsis in theatre areas, for example. It just depends on what your focus is. So the second stage, selecting criteria and the standard expected for, for your audit. It's helpful to look at clinic, clinical practice guidelines. You might want to um, develop your own tool, audit tool or performa, but it must be underpinned by a current evidence base. And looking at those national practice guidelines, national service frameworks, the National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence has some guidelines and um, evidence-based guidelines. You've got the Clinical Effectiveness and Evaluation Unit of the Royal College of Physicians. And the key is to set measurable goals within set timeframes for your audit that are underpinned by an evidence base and um, current national standards. So as part of the second stage, it's important to define the criteria and the standard. 
for an audit. So what will be your minimum standard? What will be the optimum standard? And there needs to be discussion and consensus with the other members of the team as to what the minimum standard should be because you can't analyse your data without defining that standard. And the standard is usually as a percentage to help analysis. So an example would be, it's, it would be appropriate to aim for the standard to be 100% compliance with surgical hand antisepsis to prevent surgical infections. Whereas it might be lower if it is linked to waiting times and referral times. You'll see some standards that are set at 80% in a specific area, for, for example. So once all the hard work's been done, you've prepared your performer, you then will measure performance using an audit performer to collect data that will be informed by your established guidelines and protocols. And a key thing to think about is defining numbers and times. So you need to be clear on how many observations, for example, that you'll conduct as part of this audit, how many data records need to be audited. Also, how long, what time periods are you going to be doing the audit over? So if you're doing observations, is it just going to be an afternoon? Is it going to be on alternate days? Is it going to be over a few months? Similarly, with auditing records, how far back will you go? Are you going to go back six months, a year, over five years? You're then collecting and analysing data. Um, you, when you're an, analysing the data, it's looking at how well the standards were met, were they met, were they not met, what percentage, but also looking at reasons p potentially for why the standard wasn't met and that, that analysis is very important. And drawing conclusions from the audit data will inform future actions. So the fourth stage, make improvement, is very important for impact and there's no point having audits and audit data if you're not going to inform future actions. So data collection is not going to make an impact unless you follow it up. Present your data, you disseminate your results to the team and then collaboratively agree recommendations. Creating a plan is important so you've got actions with timelines to support change and improve current practice. Or it may be that it's about sustaining current good practice and linking those timelines to assigned action so people are responsible for, for completing actions is important too. So the final stage, sustaining improvement, you could do that through repeating audit to find out whether improvements or actions have been implemented after the first audit and evaluating what was worked, what didn't work to determine whether there's future improvements needed and actions are needed. So repeating the audit is important, but also deciding how often do you repeat it monthly, um, but it could be annually. It very much depends on the context and whether there was concerns found on an audit, for example. Learning from others is very important. Sharing good practice through audit feedback, but also sharing quality improvement strategies that you've used as part of an audit and publishing your work. I don't think enough healthcare professionals do publish on quality improvement projects or service improvement projects and audits, but it's helpful to share good practice as well. So if you're a student, um, healthcare professional, I would encourage you to try and get some placements with any clinical governance or audit leads in your profession. Um, if you've got interviews coming up or assignments coming up, there's some very helpful information locally and nationally. Check out your employer websites and just put in audit. NHS websites, there's the National Clinical Audit and Patient Outcome Programme. As I mentioned earlier, Healthcare Quality Improvement Partnership website. Um, talk to people in your clinical audit departments because they coordinate audit activity and bring together the results of audits for NHS trusts, for example, and um, clinical governance needs, clinical audit needs, quality improvement hubs as well are very useful. So I have some helpful references here for anyone with assignments or interviews coming up and um, do put any questions in the YouTube comments. And if you want to contact me, you can DM me on Twitter, my website and do check out my other videos. And I hope you found it helpful today.